Every time a patient comes onto any new floor, so take an audit admission, they're taken when you do um, home care visit just to see, because vital signs are the base of everything. That is where you see abnormalities, different areas, and so you always want to get a baseline. So you take them on admission, home care visit, so if you come into their home, um, there's the routine hospital schedule, which you guys will learn about when you go to clinical. You take them, I think, like every four hours. So you take them at 7 o'clock right when you start a shift, at 11, and then at 2, and then at 6. So it just routinely, just in case you see a variation that you didn't know physically you can see. And then you take them um, before, after, and during surgery. Um, so do you guys, did you guys get exposed to the Dynamaps at lab? Mm -hmm. Those are like those like blue machines. They have the blood pressure cuff, the temperature oximeter attached to them. So they can actually keep those on. You can actually schedule it to take them every 15 minutes so you don't have to be in the room. Like say a person gets surgery, they come back and for an hour they get vital signs every 15 minutes and then for an hour they get it every 30 minutes and then it's every hour and then it's every four hours back to the thing. Mm -hmm. So they can put a little schedule on the Dynamap and sit, like program it to every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes we'll take the blood pressure, we'll, it'll write, like record them all, just print a receipt and you got your vital signs. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And so like I know you guys are learning blood pressure, which is really good to learn fundamentals, but in the hospital you mostly use Dynamaps, just automatic. But still, you gotta get it down so you know how to do it just in case. Um, so yeah, you take them before and after and during surgery. You take them when you're doing a blood transfusion, just in case you get um, like an adverse reaction. Um, it's also really good that if you see a patient and they change their physical state changes and you, you're just like, something's up with them, you take their vital signs and that better helps you assess. Or even if they like, or an elderly patient is confused, that's a good sign that something is deviating from the norm. norm. So you take the vital signs then. Um, if you're doing an intervention, you take one before and after, just to make sure that they're okay and steady, because they're crucial. And then, um, tell me if I'm talking too fast for you guys to write. No, that's good. Okay. What was the intervention, what did you say? You want to take it before and after. Before. Just in case after there's like a factor, you know. And then also on schedule, sometimes the doctors will order specific orders to take vital signs every two hours for a more critical patient. And then I think in the ICU they have one that's not quite every four hours. It's just because you know they're more critical. And then you also want to take it sometimes with like medication like digoxin, which it, um, it slows and strengthens the heart. And so if they, they say in like the drug book, if the apical pulse, which is the pulse right here, is below 60, don't give it to them because it already slows the heart. So it would go down to like 40 or something. So you want to take it before and after medications. And the medications will specifically say, or like blood pressure medications like enalapril. Um, you want to make sure that their blood pressure isn't too low because then you give them something that would lower it even more. And that could be a med error and that would be your fault. So just make sure you're aware of what medications and so you can give it to them. Or say you are giving them something that um, makes the respiratory rate go down and they're already super low and just depresses them even more. You don't want to do that either. So that just helps you know a baseline. And then you also want to take it when they're in distress. So you guys would know that though. Like if they have a hard time breathing, get their vitals. And especially like when you have a problem like that, you need to call the doctor. Make sure you know their vitals before you call the doctor because he's going to ask. And you don't want to be like, oh, sorry, let me go get them. You want to know them. What is the normal temperature? Taylor. 98.6. To what? When would be a fever? Oh, if it's like 100. 100.4 is the norm. So 96.8 to 100.4. So here we can write this down. Okay. So, but there is also like, because you take temperatures in different spots. Yeah. So of course some spots are warmer. Half degree more on rectal and oral. Um, Yes, yeah, so tympanic and oral would be 98.6. And then also, when you give an oral temperature, which is in your mouth, you don't want them to have drink in anything in the last 10 to 15 minutes. Because, if, you know, if you, you'd probably notice if you just drink a cold drink, your mouth is cold. And then yeah. it'll be lower, and then we'll think it's a problem. But really, it's just not taken correctly. And then you have rectal, which is... 99.5, and this is all in Fahrenheit, so I'm from Canada, 
Yeah. So I was like, are you serious? But it's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So. <laughs> and then we have auxiliary, which is your armpit. And this one tends to be 97.7. So these are the normals for temperature. So vital signs. So they will ask you a question, and they'll ask you where they're giving it and what the temperature would be. So make sure you just memorize these and just know them. OK, and now we have um, beats per minute, so pulse. Do you know what the normal is for that? For pulse, is going to be 60 to 100. Perfect, good job. So what would it be called if their pulse is like 55? Hypo. Bradycardia. Bradycardia. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So I think I remember because I remember I was like Brady and Tacky. Like, how do I remember who that is? So Brady, I think of just like a really slow person, mm -hmm. just like a like I think of like an obese person maybe. Yeah. Brady, and then Tacky, I think of like a like a really energetic girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have weird analogies for it, but so what would we, what would you call it if it was 110? Then it's hyper. No, tachycardia. Yeah. Perfect. That's great. Okay, and then we have um, respirations. What's normal for that? Um, it's between, is it 14? Well, I know it's right around 12 or 14. I don't know. 12 to 20, yeah. 12. So yeah, you'll memorize these and just like, you'll know them forever. So what would we call it if it was 11? Okay, so it would be bradyapnea. So oh, brady yeah. means slow, apnea means breathing, and then bradycardia is this one. So cardia means heart. And heart is the beats per minute. Generally, when are you going to change it from hypo and hyper to bradyapnea? Um, I honestly haven't used hyper and hypo ever. Like hypothermia. Oh, ones? that's for temperature, but like. Like, how do you know which one? Yeah. What were to use first? Because they're kind of. I know, they're kind of interchangeable. You'll just pick up the hospital lingo, honestly. And so the only times I've ever used hypo and hyper, besides like IV fluids, which you'll learn about later, so don't worry about that, mm -hmm. um, is temperature. Because you wouldn't say like bradya temp, like I don't know. So mostly it's brady and tacky. But you'll catch it, catch it, and you'll, okay. you know. Um, okay. So what is the normal for blood pressure? It's um, 120 to 80. Yeah, perfect. So I'm sure as you're doing your um, 20 assessments, you're like, oh, you're hypertension. And so I guess that's when you use hyper and hypo too. So hypertension is higher, um, hypotension is lower. And a lot of our people in our society are hypertension, just with the high cholesterol and everything. And then O2 SATs. This one kind of depends on the person. But Just above 90. Yeah, above 90. So you want to keep it above 90, but 95% is ideal. And that's the on the Dynamap where you guys put like the hand clamp on the finger and it measures like it measures how much oxygen you have saturated to your hemoglobin, how much is attached. So how much is being carried and used. So, but I don't know if I should confuse you guys, but there's a thing called COPD which is um, chronic, like you, yeah, carbon dioxide in you. So they're gonna always have a lower one, and that's just gonna be the normal. Because what you gotta remember about vital signs is these may be the normals, but every patient has their own normal too. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important why they get vitals on admission because that's their baseline. So they know that throughout the patient's stay, they know if they've deviated and if that's different from them, their normal. Because you guys are doing your 20 assessments, you probably have a variation. And they're healthy people, like that's just their normals. So you just gotta remember, it's not always like exact. But this is the, where we'd like to stay around. This is our goal. So just remember that too. Um, do we need to, for the test and stuff, do we need to know the normals for like uh, kids? No. No? So you guys are just doing adult health, but then fourth semester, which is where I am, it's gonna be those values. Oh, okay. But do keep in mind that kids are gonna have a higher Pulse, they're going to have a higher, like respiration, blood pressure, they're just kind of higher. But for your concerning, it's this is the baseline. So, what's the word for too little oxygen in the blood? 
Um, hypoxia. Hypoxia. So it's like. And you can't have too much. Yeah. So hypoxia. That was a good question. <laughs>